with more legacy institutions getting involved in crypto, not Bitcoin, we're starting to see other offerings emerge. And the latest one is something called Real World Assets, or RWAs. We've talked about this in the past, but I think we need to talk about this again. Welcome back, everyone. That's right. We are going to dive into the latest news in the crypto space. There is some buzz around real world assets. That's right. That's right, guys. Uh, essentially, a, a company named Backed, not Backed, uh, is bringing real world assets to the blockchain. And what does this mean for everybody? Okay, well, let's start off with the basics. What are real world assets? Real world assets are digital tokens that represent physical assets on the blockchain. These assets can include real estate, commodities, art, bonds, stocks, machinery, and collectibles. Now, keep in mind, there is something in between the asset and the owner of the real world asset, right? And this is essentially the counterparty or the Oracle. Okay. Um, many shit coins have come and gone, uh, claiming to solve the Oracle problem. The most popular one is Chainlink. Chainlink is what's being used by this, uh, by this latest offering by backed. Okay. And before we continue, let's talk about what an Oracle is. An Oracle is a third party service for smart contracts. Oracles provide trusted information based on the outside world sources to the on blockchain smart contracts. So for example, in a contract to automatically purchase Bitcoin at a predetermined price, the fulfillment condition is based on the current exchange rate for Bitcoin. An off-chain Oracle can constantly monitor the price to provide the triggering condition to the contract. That's right. So if you understood that correctly, you are trusting this third party to tell you what is true. And this essentially is the Oracle problem, right? Because you now have no choice but to trust some type of an organization, some type of a um, centralized grouping of people that are essentially aggregating this data off chain and then providing it on the chain. And then you have to essentially hope that these businesses are telling you the truth, okay? Now, the real world assets themselves, they're, they're highly susceptible to counterparty risk because essentially this whole entire ecosystem that they're gonna try to essentially create is going to um, depend on these oracles, right? Or these truth tellers. And I, I'm putting truth tellers in, in quotation marks because it, it, is it really the truth? How do you know that you don't anyways? So my whole, my whole beef with the, with the real world assets. I mean, besides the fact, of course, this is the Bitcoin only channel and these are shit coins. The, the whole problem is this, right? Uh, is essentially you've got two main points of failure. Okay. You've got the Oracle and then you've got the custodian because essentially this company, uh, backed, okay. Is going to be, uh, is, is going to be essentially providing this, this service Okay, and they are going to be providing custodian services, right, for these for these assets. I mean, I'm assuming because otherwise, how else can you control the underlying asset to the digital representation of that asset, right? The real world asset. So, again, th th this is the main problem, right? The oracle and the custodian. Now, that to me is the problem for the custodian. Now, the oracle is this, right? Uh, essentially, the way that that oracles work is that you stake your your shit coin, okay, and somehow staking that coin um, provides uh, security to the the oracle, okay. So, um, in other words, you are going to move your token to some centralized platform in order to provide these truth telling services. So, 
again, we're dealing with central points of failure. Uh, the people that are actually staking this token have absolutely no idea whether the data that the Oracle that they're staking for is actually, you know, whether that data is correct or not. I mean, to a certain extent, it's almost irrelevant to them. Of course, uh, I believe people in the Chainlink world would tell you, uh, well, you know, if if the if the Oracle fails or it's not telling the truth, then, you know, we lose our stake. Um, Again, I don't know how true that is. I don't do any of this stuff. This is just based on what I've read. Personally, this is a lot of trust involved. I came to Bitcoin for trust minimization, and this, this is a lot of trust. A couple more things that I thought of when it comes to these real-world assets, which, which do bother me, right, is besides the Oracle problem and besides the custodianship, we have to essentially assume that there's going to be an independent auditor, right? Because you can't necessarily trust the custodian to tell you the truth. Um, and, I mean, the Oracle... Um, you are assuming that the Oracle that is providing this data on chain um, is telling the truth. So there's a lot of assumptions. And, and since this is going to be a legacy product, I'm pretty sure uh, that there's going to be some type of rating agency or some type of an independent auditor in traditional markets, right? There's many of these types of auditors and agencies. And if people rewind to 2008, you will recall the mortgage crisis. Well, those mortgages, okay, those mortgages uh, were all given a AAA rating until they weren't AAA rating. So how much can you trust these rating agencies? So again, there is now another possible point of failure. So you have to trust that the auditor and or the rating agencies are not coercing with the underlying, with the custodian and or with the oracle the truth teller okay so this is to me this is a lot of trust okay this is very much the fiat system this is very much fiat games i do understand that you know for the most part this video is going to be seen as fud right because uh, you know of course you know, I'm telling you that the latest and greatest thing is not wonderful, but there's a whole entire group of paid marketers on YouTube and Twitter and all of these social platforms that are telling you different, right? They're telling you that the sky's the limit, everything is rosy, everything is going to be fantastic. But look, I think that we deserve to know the entire story. We deserve to have the other side of this coin. Okay, so from the marketer's perspective, there's all kinds of opportunity, there's all kinds of hope in this. But from a current Bitcoiner's perspective, and from the way I'm looking at it, I see a lot of trust holes that I don't want to deal with. So I personally, I would not take this risk. I would stay away from these types of products because I don't think we know how easily um, that they can blow up. And if we just kind of think back, right, the, the marketers are always telling us how good and how safe everything is. Luna was safe until it wasn't. BlockFi was safe until it wasn't. All of these cheerleaders, right, they were all touting this stuff and everybody was showing how much money they were making and all of this good stuff until all of a sudden, all of a sudden they weren't, right? They weren't making all this money. So, Anyways, guys, yeah, I, I just I wanted to talk about the real world assets thing because it's the third time that I see it come up. And now, you know, you've got bigger companies coming into the space. They are offering these products. And I think that there's a lot of people that don't realize how these products can fail. So we are just getting a lot of assurances and a lot of fluffy words around something that has a lot of trust built into it and a lot of unknowns. Anyways, guys, that's what I wanted to talk about today. Catch you tomorrow.